Alrighty everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video, and as promised last week, I'm here with a follow-up episode to my top 10 best elemental skills. Today we'll be discussing the top 10 best elemental bursts in the game, which I imagine you guys are more excited about since bursts are the PS de resistance of a character. Similarly to the previous episode, I want to lay down some ground rules for this one. Elemental bursts are naturally extremely consequential in terms of effect, and being the centerpiece of a unit's moveset, the thought of properly balancing them when extracted out of said kit will be an even bigger can of worms than a kit to open, so just to prevent a war in the comment section, let's keep the same rules as before, where we're assuming these bursts are taken out of the kit and treated as sort of like a path resonance active like you see in Star Rail, an external ability you can use. In addition, all passive benefits that explicitly state the burst name in the description will also carry over. 4 star units will have up to C6 to work with, and 5 stars will have up to C2. To reiterate one final time, this video is all in good fun. Think of it more like a what would happen if scenario rather than a definitive list on who is the best burst. It all comes down to circumstance and preferences anyway, so without further ado, let's get started. And like before, there's no particular order, just a list of 10. First elemental burst I want to talk about is Eula's Glacial Illumination. No you're not tripping, you're watching a video made by Vars, and no I'm not being held at gunpoint. I'm unironically saying she is one of the best bursts in the game because on paper, this move is horse The only reason it sucks is because it's on her. On activation, she does a small bit of cryo damage to nearby enemies, then creates a lightfall sword for 7 seconds. During that time, her normal attacks, elemental skill, and burst generate a stack up to a cap of 30. And after 7 seconds pass, the lightfall sword crashes down for immense physical damage. Even to this day, Eula has consistently held on to the moniker of one-shot queen. Glacial Illumination has, beyond any shadow of doubt, the most powerful single attack in the entire game, reaching over 5,000% physical damage if you can somehow acquire full stacks. What makes this easier said than done is that Eula is a Claymore user, notorious for the slow attack speed. If you give this to any other weapon type, they would have zero trouble getting to 30 stacks, especially if this skill and burst happen to be damaging abilities too. With Eula's burst, you essentially have a humongous DPS nuke on any character. As a physical attack, it would be better suited for teams that can perform superconduct for the shred effect, but at the same time, consistently reaching 30 stacks will make this a very handy ultimate to have on just about anyone. Imagine all the fun ways you can mess with this ultimate. Giving it to Venti and having his ultimate get 30 stacks before crashing the sword onto everyone as a finisher, or giving this to Ayaka and having her tornado do the same thing. Anyone who can deal a lot of individual hits per second will stack this up in a fraction of the time for humongous DPS. Now she does have two ascension passives that state her ultimate's name, but neither of them are usable outside of Eula's kit. Either way, Eula mains can finally rejoice, I'm giving you a win this time. Now for a more boring take, we have Mr. Bennett, who had to be in the studio no matter what. There's a reason he's called the walking elemental burst. Few characters have an ultimate as versatile, simple, but effective as Bennett. On activation, he smashes the ground with a big red circle that actually deals pretty significant pyro damage if you can vaporize or melt it. But that's besides the point. Anyone who stands in the circle continuously regenerates HP up to 70% of their max health, and during this time they get a huge flat attack boost, to the tune of around 120% of Bennett's base attack if you include Z1, which if you were any of the max attack swords on him amounts to just over a grant. Characters in the AoE get imbued with Pyro, meaning if you're in any field that applies a debuff on you for being Electro, Cryo, Hydro, whatever, you get to wipe that off of you. This thing has a cheap energy cost of 60, a 12 second duration, and 15 second cooldown, long enough of time for you to account for just about every rotation type in the game. At C1, the attack boost applies unconditionally, at C5 you get 3 more levels in his burst for even more bonus attack, and at C6 you get 15% bonus Pyro damage and Pyro infusion. Yes, you should unlock his Constellation 6, it's 2024, stop crying. What makes this burst so valuable even 3.5 years into Genshin is that it consolidates both offensive and defensive support into a tight package with very easy activation. Healers generally don't come with offensive buffs to them outside of elemental application and vice versa. Bennett is still one of the few characters who can do both very effectively, making him extremely party slot efficient. While a number of modern units aren't compatible with him, it still doesn't change the fact that he's Bennett. If you take Fantastic Voyage out of his kit, you don't have to waste the party slot to use it anymore. You can slot this on any team that has any semblance of attack scaling and be set for life. Definitely a must-have on this list. Another character that I'd be remiss to not include would be Xingqiu, who, similarly to Bennett, is a walking elemental burst. His rain cutter spawns an array of water swords that orbit the active character, providing damage reduction, a small amount of healing, and stagger resistance. In addition, when normal attacking, the rain swords launch a tandem attack for tons of hydro damage and application. C1 doesn't state his burst, but given the properties of his rain swords, I think it's fine to include them. Then C2 gives 3 more seconds of his burst and 15% hydro shred, and at C6, every third follow-up attack does huge damage and generates energy. This ability is an absolute must-have for any hydro-related team, and honestly any team that wants to have good coverage. It can tank hits for you, heal you a small amount, give stack resistance, and has follow-up attacks. 
With a duration of 15 seconds and a cooldown of 20, it only has a 75% uptime, but practically that shouldn't be much of an issue as your team needs 5 seconds to refresh buffs anyway. Most people don't consider Xingqiu's defensive utility to be self-sufficient, so you still need to bring along a tank or healer, but with how many things this burst does, you should have more than enough space for that. Best of all, it synergizes with like 90% of the roster in some capacity. I'm partially biased towards a different unit with a similar effect, but Xingqiu is definitely a very wise choice to have as your external burst. One of the most party slot efficient units in the game, and his burst is a big part of that. Moving on we have Mr. Tone Dev Bard himself, Venti. Though he is unanimously considered the weakest Archon both in game and in lore if I remember correctly, few would dare to write him off as a bad character. Anytime you come across a chamber with huge clusters of small enemies, that my friend is what's called a Venti Chamber. Wind's Grand Oath summons a massive vortex of wind that pulls all enemies towards it, damaging everyone caught within it and lifting up smaller moves. The Vortex can absorb elements too, creating a blender of Pyro Swirl, Hydro Swirl, Cryo Swirl, or Electro Swirl damage. Now something I think a lot of people forget about is the sheer damage of this attack. Venti's Burst can do ridiculous amounts of DPS just by itself, strong enough to solo clear an entire chamber on its own. After the ultimate wears off, he can regenerate 15 energy for himself, or in this hypothetical, the active character, and 15 energy to anyone whose element corresponds to the one that got absorbed, giving battery purposes too. Admittedly, this is one of the more situational bursts out there. Compared to the first three where they can be used anywhere, Venti's burst is almost strictly meant for grouping clusters of enemies, but I mean, it's just so good in those situations, to the point where no other unit in the entire game can even come close to replicating. Other animal units may have a grouping effect of some sort, but Venti's the absolute king in this department, no questions asked. My one gripe is that it has a pretty lousy uptime, lasting only 8 seconds with almost double the cooldown, but I'd like to see a chamber survive even one of these vortexes. It's just that good. Let's bring in someone you may not have expected, Auntie Shenyun. Shenyun's burst is not included for its power, rather its playstyle. On activation, stars gather at dusk, damages all nearby enemies and heals all characters immediately, and then for 16 seconds onwards, the entire party regenerates HP per 2.5 seconds and gains significantly increased jump height, being able to perform plunging attacks without drawing assistance and getting follow-up animal damage along with it. Shenyun has proven to be one of the most intriguing supports in the game for turning anyone into a half-decent plunging attack DPS. Thankfully her A4 passive does state the burst name so you get to enjoy that sweet bonus plunging damage, not to mention the extra boost from a C2. Even if you have no interest in turning your on-fielder into a pogo stick of death, the party-wide healing component makes her extremely compatible with Farina's burst, generating fan for stacks like you wouldn't believe. Alternatively, it's just good to have for healing or even overall travel as you can hop, skip, and jump over walls you wouldn't be able to otherwise. There are a ton of use cases for this. Unlike Bennett's Burst, which confines you to a single area for the duration, you can move freely around with Xinyu, so that might be a quality of life trade-off worth making. She has a very generous uptime of 16 seconds with only an 18 second cooldown as well. Essentially, you can think of Xinyu's Burst as a DLC version of Jean's Burst. It's just a very good well-rounded ability, whether you're using all parts of it or just a healing. Since we brought up Farina, we might as well mention her next. Farina has to be on this list. Let the People Rejoice deals a massive amount of Hydro damage to nearby enemies and then for 18 seconds, any change in HP, whether gained or lost by any member of your party will rack up fanfare stacks, with each one increasing the amount of healing you receive and boosting the damage of all party members. At base, it caps out at 75% bonus damage, the highest we've seen today from a single character, especially considering it's for everyone in the party, not just the active character, so it can even improve the DPS of off-field effects that don't snapshot like Xingqiu's Rain Cutter. With C1, the fanfare stacks increase to 400, bringing your max damage from 75 to 100%, and with C2, your rate of stack accumulation increases to a point where you can easily cap out within the first second or two. It also has overflow of time, letting you have this effect basically up permanently so long as you can refresh your fanfare. Now I know what you're going to say. Farina's burst is heavily reliant on a skill to reach maximum efficiency, and I get it. Her skill slot allows you to rack up stacks of fanfare quickly as they drain HP from your party members. Plus the bonus max health from C2 kind of gets wasted unless the character that you use it on is an HP scaler like Nivellet. That being said, with C2 accelerating your rate of accumulation, you really only need your main unit to be sufficiently injured and then healed to gap out. That's why C1 and C2 are so powerful on Farina. Her burst goes from feeling kind of awkward to use to one of the most powerful buffs in all of Genshin. 100% bonus damage to all members in your party is still an insane amount to think about. Without her skill, it is hard to stack fanfare, but like I said with C2, it's not as hard as people think. All you need is one person to drop to half, then heal back to full, and there you go. This is the hill I'm gonna die on. On to number 7, we have Shangling, the biggest cheater in Genshin. Why? Because her Pyronado has snapshot and no internal cooldown, making it the most splashable elemental burst in the game. Shangling is another unit who's effectively worthless without her ultimate, so if you take the only part of her kit that's good, and by good I mean extremely good, you get all the good stuff without needing the full character, kind of like Bennett. Her Pyronado has a reasonably solid uptime if you include her C4, going from 10 seconds to 14 out of 20. 
even with that snapshotting bus, it does so much damage on its own, several thousands at minimum. With very generous area coverage and consistent pyro application, you can find a number of ways to amplify this attack both from units and reactions alike. Plus a C6, everyone gets bonus pyro damage, so if you decide to give this to Hu Tao, D Luke, Linny, and such, they get to enjoy a small buff to boot. You don't really see Shenling in a lot of teams that don't include Bennett given how well the two synergize with one another, but I think having a fifth elemental burst that any of the four party members can activate will enable hers to actually work in teams outside of him. It's just an overall solid attack burst that can contribute a ton of DPS for your team, right up there next to Venti and Eulis. On the subject of attack bursts, let's put Ayaka here as well. If I was checking out 5 stars only at C0, I wouldn't think to include her, but since they get to have 2, Ayaka Sonetsu is definitely one of the best ultimates to have on the side. Though it only lasts for a short duration, the damage it pumps out is staggering, especially if you can line up all 3 blizzards on one target. Conveniently, the area coverage is quite nice if in the event you want to use it for clearing groups of enemies. I wouldn't be averse to giving this to say a Nivellet team or even Mono Hydro, teams that wouldn't take a cryo unit otherwise. You can practically include this anywhere though. Cryo is not very intrusive, evidenced by the Fridge team bringing cryo application along since you can still perform bloom reactions without any issue. And not counting the sheer absurdity of Pyronado, I believe C2 Somitsu is the second highest damaging burst in the game if we include all of the individual attacks together, surpassed only by Eula. I might be mistaken, maybe someone does more now, but you really can't go wrong with this. Unlike Shangling and Yula, Ayaka actually has abilities that can let her DPS besides her ultimate, but she's still first and foremost known for her incredible blizzard. Second to last one would be Baiju. I like his burst, it's not something people would think of off the top of their head, but if you take a closer look at it, it's a fantastic ability for convenience. Holistic Revivification creates a shield every 2.5 seconds that's strong enough to block at least one attack. While the shield is in effect, a new shield generates, breaks, or when the effect expires, Baiju heals the active character. I believe this is the first off-field simultaneous seal and shield. Noelle can do the same, but she has to be on active duty. Obviously, the healing is the main focus. If you take a look at the shield scaling, you'll notice how pitiful it is, but considering it refreshes on itself, you effectively have almost consistent super armor, making it slightly better than Xingqiu's from a defensive standpoint. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the shield also does dendro damage whenever it heals, so you get dendro application on the side as well, and with this A4, he increases the damage of elemental reactions while healed by those shields. So if you decide to run any dendro-based team and are having a hard time supplying a healer, this wouldn't be the worst choice to go for. Outside of that, it's reminiscent of Shenyun, where whether you're using the full burst or just the sustained portion of it, it's a great one to have for convenience. With this, you can focus entirely on 4 damage dealers instead of 3 damage and 1 support like most parties do. Alternatively, this lets you run Farina without needing to bring Jean or someone else along, so take everything I said about Shenyun and apply it to here, only instead of plunging attacks, it's dendro applications and shields. Last but not least, we have Yellen's Death Clarion Dice. Not sure why I decided to include her last in both videos, but hey, I said not least. Yellen's burst is functionally identical to Xingqiu's, only it comes with a big hydro attack at the start of it and scales off HP instead of attack. Death Clarion Dice trades all the defensive utility that Rain Cutter affords in exchange for huge DPS, easily overshadowing his 4 star counterpart, although it falls short in application. With C2, however, the application becomes almost the same, if not damn near close, and the damage goes even higher. Best of all, it comes with a fantastic supportive ability where it can progressively increase the damage of the active character for the duration, capping out at 50% towards the end of it, but overall averaging around 30% throughout the entirety. I personally would rather take Yelan's burst over Xingqiu's, considering the latter still demands that you bring a heal or shield support with you, in which case I would prefer just investing the slot into full damage, but that might just be a result of 5 stars being evaluated at C2 instead of C0, giving her an advantage. At base, I would still consider her burst to be an easy choice for top 10 though. The damage is just too good from the attack itself and the buff. And there you have it, my top 10 elemental bursts. Really quickly I guess, for the sake of honorable mentions, I was also thinking about including Farazan, Shogun, Kokomi, Mona, Beidou, and Fischl. Fischl probably should have been on the list, since her ultimate is technically a carbon copy of her skill, but that would have just been me repeating the same thing again. So I wanted to include someone else. Regardless, like last time, feel free to let me know your own top 10 bursts in the comments down below. And aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Varsvarim, join my Discord server, and check out my top 10 elemental skills video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.